What's going on, YouTube family? My name is Kieran. I'm the owner and founder of Contagious Co., a clothing brand focused on making self-love contagious for mental health awareness and suicide prevention. Guys, in this video today, we're going to talk about how I built a six-figure clothing brand and some great advice for you to do the same thing. So disclaimer, if you haven't seen the last video, I am on route to having my first six-figure year, right? Currently at 70K. I'm a been in business about a little, like a year and a half. Um, so the first year, of course, a couple months, then this year, um, we really took off. And I'm going to tell you some key things that helped me do that and how you can do the same exact things. All right. So the first thing, guys, and I'm going to say this for anybody. I don't care who you are. I don't care what stage you're at, how successful, how close you are to hitting that mark, anything like that, um, you know, is invest in coaching, right? There's no reason for you to go through the process trying to figure it out on your own. There's no reason for you to go through the process guessing. Guys, success leaves clues, study success, find some people who you can learn from. You know, uh, what really, really helped me out is around the time I was starting my brand, there was a lot of people making content around building a brand, a lot of reputable people. And I deep dove into that, right? And I was able to find, uh, you know, a brand that, that really resonated with me, their story, things like that. This brand is actually World Envision. So Marlon Watts, Nicholas Clark, they actually were doing like master classes and I had joined in their master classes. I bought their eBooks, things like that. And every time I, I got something set aside from the YouTube videos, I was able to get so much game and insight on what I needed to do that helped me elevate and develop my brand one step, one step, one step, right? Now, again, the master classes have a lot of value. I think they have a three day master class that, that they run right now. That's like $97 and it teaches you literally everything, branding, um, you know, find finding the right design, how to do 10K in a month, run the ads, literally like elevated me mentally, right? And I got a lot of information from that. But set aside from that, right? Because that's still a lot of value, but it's only three days, it's only three hours total. So we're really elevated when, when they opened up their inner circle and I was one of the first people to join that inner circle. And now I'm an alumni and still participate and heavily involved in that group, right? So this really turned things up because it went from just that three hour, uh, three, three hours total for three days, um, that, you know, masterclass to now, like every day we're meeting for an hour going over so many things. And I've been there since January. Right. So literally this was a big part of uh, my success, being able to be around like-minded individuals, being able to get the information, being able to just constantly learn and evolve and be able to have people that I can ask questions to as well. This was a big uh, help for me growing my brand at this sort of rate, at this sort of speed. Because even though I try to remind myself, because you're always going to see somebody bigger than you. You're always going to see somebody you doing, you know, with more success than you. But at the same time, man, there's so many people who would like literally, they're fighting to get to where you're at, right? So you want to just keep in mind that, you know, I see that there's brands doing 50K a month. I see that their brands doing 100K, half a million a month, things like that, right? Um, I, I'm not there yet. But yet, right? And you just got to go through your process and learn these things. But you going blindfolded, you going with no sort of roadmap, you going with no sort of insight, no sort of mentor, anything like that. It's going to be very challenging for you to skip a lot of the steps that I, ha that I was able to skip because I was getting information, right? Um, I, I was able to miss, a, I was able to skip a lot of mistakes. Yeah, I still made mistakes, right? Because we're not going to, it's it's not going to be a 100% a foolproof thing like where it's like you're not going to make any mistakes. No, you're still going to make mistakes because you're still learning, you're still growing. But I am at where I'm at now, which probably would have took me three to five years on my own. So that was a big thing. So I say for anybody looking to grow and, and not waste no time, invest in yourself, invest in your brand, get knowledge, get information, and join some sort of mentorship program. I would I would say join you know the word envision at least get the master class at least watch the YouTube videos and things like that I'm going to be giving information here like this as well if anybody has questions for me you can always message me as well and I'll help you to the best of my abilities um, you know of course but they say even at any level you're at man make sure that you always have a mentor because that's going to help you continue to grow and elevate don't just rely on your own information and don't just rely on like there's a lot of people on the internet that they don't really do it you know what i mean they don't really have a, a successful brand right and it's a difference between like a brand and a business you know you might have a hot product but that product might not stay hot forever 
That's why I say a brand, because you want to build a brand, something that has message, something that has meaning, something that's just bigger than just whatever product, right? And that's where we're really focused on building is brands, things that live forever, like Nike, like Apple, brands like that. You know what I mean? So the second thing that really helped my brand elevate was when I stopped trying to do everything, right? I thought it was funny that, um, you know, you'd be surprised at how many people own brands, but don't design their product, you know? And that's the biggest misconception people have. People think like, oh, I got like sauce, I got swag, I got, you know, whatever, whatever, that they think that, okay, I'm gonna make a brand, you know? But they don't have any message, they don't have any story, they don't have anything like that. Now they know how to, they know what look good and things like that, but you know, they might be a great designer, you know what I mean? But you have people who have the vision, right? Who have a, a brand idea, brand identity, message, story, all these things like that, but they don't have the ability to design. Now, these would be great people to go in business with and partner with. But at the same time, like what I did, you can go on like Instagram, Fiverr, and you find people who just eat, breathe, and just bleed design. You know, this is what they do. This is what they study. This is what they focus on. So every day they're cranking out three to five designs. And you can hit them up for a custom work that I mean might charge like cost you like thirty to eighty dollars. Now this is a thirty to eighty dollar investment that you can put into your business that's going to allow you to make thousands of dollars off of. Now this is a this is going to be a communication barrier, right? Because if you're telling them what you want, you really have to make sure that you can articulate what you want, right? What's the best thing for your brand, right? And also what goes into this. So that just sum that up, delegating. Understanding the things that you can develop these skills, right? But at the same time, what, what I say is like, while you're developing the skills, go pay for who already got it. You know what I mean? Now, you don't want to have to, you know, because you want to keep throwing money, you know, focus on the money. You want to keep just buying designs, buying designs. So that's another thing, too. Doubling down on that winning design. In the beginning, nobody knows your, nobody knows your brand. Nobody, like, you know what I mean? It's like 8 billion people in the world. And... You probably sold what, like 300 of them just starting out, and probably not even that. Nobody knows the brand. Don't focus on keep on doing new releases. Don't focus on dropping in the next thing because you don't know how that's going to hit. You don't know if it's going to take off. You don't know if everybody's going to love it, if everybody's going to buy it. You can literally have one winning design and change the color of your garment, right? Release different colorways. Change the color of your print. Do different type of styles with that same design. Release it on different products. Get the t-shirts, get the hoodies, get beanies, get dad hats, get anything with that, right? Get tote bags. Just keep on playing off of that same design that people already know, that people are beginning to know, right? They're beginning to associate that with your brand. And, they're, and, they're, and, and it basically tells people what your brand is about. It tells your story already from them just seeing that, you know? So if you don't have the skill, you can develop the skill in the background, but go buy it from somebody or pay somebody else who already got the skill because we need to get motion now. We can't wait till you build the skill. We don't even know how long that's going to take. You might be waiting around. Some of you guys might be waiting around right now trying to develop a skill that's going to take you two years to develop. And by then, you could have already had a six-figure business by just delegating it and, and paying somebody for the skill that they already have. And sometimes, too, you know, you might not be able to develop every skill because it's just outside of your own, like your own thinking, your own awareness. You don't have the eye for it. You just some things you might not be able to develop. So even at your best, you might be a five out of 10 at that. And that might be your peak because you just don't got that sort of like gift. You know what I mean? So work with people and that's going to be a part of your team as well. Double down on the design that's winning and keep running it up and keep giving the people what they want because it's still millions of people who have never seen your product who have who haven't purchased your product that you can still keep going to and the people who are supporting you just keep releasing different things of that same design different variations of that same design for them to purchase again and rock now for the fall and the fall colorways or in the hoodies or in whatever else you want to release but i promise you you don't have to come up with a ton of different designs you can test different designs here and there to see what hits or not but don't ever stop doing what's working. Double down on what's working. The third thing that I would say definitely helped me get to this point was focusing on my strengths, right? And 
not being afraid, like facing the fear, right? Because you're going to move. You're going to be afraid when you're doing something that's just completely foreign for you, right? Um, I was listening to this podcast and it says how like your brain doesn't want you to succeed because your brain wants you to stick in these routines that you already have. That's why you're that's why you have the ability to to drive and sing a song at the same time or girls put their makeup and drive is because it's so it's second nature to you. You don't even think about it at this point. It's on autopilot and you have a lot of routines in the in the, the life that you live. These things are all on, on autopilot. It's an auto suggestion that you come home after work, you turn on the TV or whatever the case may be. Right. Your brain wants you to stay in this comfort zone. Because it's so familiar with this already. So when you're trying to completely change your life, there's going to be a lot of tension between, you know, an inner battle for yourself based on what you want and what you desire and what you're already comfortable with. Right. So you're going to move with this fear, but you have to just face that fear because that's the only way to get to that point. And as you work through it, your mind, your brain will start to become more comfortable with this uh, discomfort, you know what I mean? And once you get to that point, it's less uh, friction for you moving forward, right? So just focus on like that, like this is what I want. So like for me, that that thing was opening the kiosk. And I would say this is the hand in hand to reinforce the third thing, opening the kiosk. See, a lot of people are building brands today and they're trying to focus on how they can get sales online. But, and, and this is something one of my mentors said to me and to our group, right? What in the last 30 days, have you bought something that you've never bought before online? Some of you guys may have, but some of you guys are going to say, no, you haven't bought anything that you've never had. You've never seen before in the last 30 days. Right. But in person, have you tried or picked up something new or purchased something new in the last 30 days that you haven't tried before? Right. If you went to out to eat and you tried a new meal, right? Or if you saw something in, in the checkout line and you picked up a, a different type of candy bar, I don't know. But it's more likely that you will try something new and something you're unfamiliar with if you're presented with that in person than if you are online. So think about this with your brand. If you put position yourself to be in front of people in person, it's more likely that they're going to support and buy from your brand, right? So the first way you can do this is, is learning how to sell at pop-up shops. You're going to have pop-up shops in your, in your area, farmer's markets, or even places where you can just go pop up yourself, right? And I can do a video on pop-up shops and just selling techniques and things like that. But uh, that's the first thing. Now, then you get the opportunity to open up a kiosk when you feel you're ready or when you're just ready to take that risk. And become ready by doing it, right? Because I couldn't say that I was ready. I I done pop up shops before, but my selling skills wasn't at the where it's at now. Or a month after having a kiosk, right? Having a kiosk in a mall is basically like a everyday pop up shop. It's already uh you know it's already warm traffic, warm leads, warm customers, right? Because they're seeing what you have. You have opportunity to just break down everything and sell to them in about sixty seconds to 120 seconds perhaps you know what i mean working on your sales pitch and then delivering that thing right so i had to move with that fear i left i quit my job because i wasn't gonna be able to do both my job i was like nine hours a day at my job so i'm like i'm gonna leave this and and bet on myself right and that's why i was able to go do 14k in the first month just based on the fact that i had everything to lose you know what i mean it's like you either go on sink or swim you know, you're going to sink or swim. And I had to teach myself how to really sell and be consistent with it and figure out what's not working and what is working. And I can go in that too and break down my sales pitch and how I sell and how I close with you guys as well. But a big part of that is that I love my brand. I love my product. You can tell what I'm talking about. And I'm very passionate about my brand. So people believe people buy from who they know, like and trust. Right. So they know you because you're introducing yourself. You're meeting them in person. So it's a real, uh, you know, you're making you're making a real acquaintance, right? Then they're gonna they're gonna trust you and like you based on how that interaction goes and the type of eye contact you make and if it sounds believable or do you sound like somebody that is trying to get a dollar? You know what I mean? So that's the difference. But opening that kiosk, doing it with fear, and just not trying to stay comfortable and put myself in that position to win or potentially fail, just betting on myself and betting on winning. You know what I mean? So. So the recap, 
getting in the coaching session, get uh, tapping in with World and Vision. You know what I mean? That allowed me to get the information, get the game, get so many different things, right? I mean, it's so much information in it. Uh, then going into like delegating and inviting people to be a part of the process, inviting people to be a part of the journey, paying people for their services to help me uh, cut time off of this this mission, right? Because me learning it could be two, three years, could be a couple months, right? But I can go get it and then have it in six hours and then run the play and I can just take off with it and start testing it and start figuring it out, right? So that allowed me to cut time I have by just working with other people and um, allowing people to be a part of the process as well and building a team around that, right? And then the third thing was getting out of your comfort zone and facing fears or anyway, just going through it, right? And opening that kiosk, building those skills, focusing on the strengths that I believe I already have. I don't think I'm the best speaker ever, but I've been told a lot that I'm good at speaking. So with that, it has to go into like sales and things like that and boom, boom, boom. So I understood like, okay, if I can do this, then I know that I can develop this skill and become better at that. So I just doubled down on it and I bet on myself and it's been going, it's been working, right? So like I said, on the goal is to hit 100K this month. I mean, this uh, this year, right? Then the next goal is to do 100K in a month, you know? So you want to keep on going up. And the only way you're going to keep going up is by staying in a community with like-minded people and people who are smarter than you and know more about what you're trying to do because they've already done it, right? Continuing to build a team. Like I was saying before, continue to build a team, continue that people around you who have skills that you have not developed yet, or they're just going to be better at it than you anyway, because they're passionate about it. They love it. They wake up for it. They just, you know, it just, they're motivated to do that thing. Right. And the last thing is continue to face fears and continue to put yourself in positions that make you feel uncomfortable and doing it anyway, until you start to become comfortable with the discomfort. And once you get into that point, that's really what entrepreneurship is about. How how long can you stay into this in this discomfort and learn and grow and continue to elevate, continue to learn and grow until you're just so far that you look back and you're just amazed at where you're at. But thank you guys for watching the video. We're not going to take it too, too further from here. I will go in more in depth on some of these topics as well. If you have any questions, just let me know. Drop it in the comments. If you want to message me, you can do it in the comments. Do it on IG. Uh, contagious underscore C-O. But until next time, love you guys. Take care of yourself. Peace.